Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Jeeta. I am Rajdeep. This is the new installment in the ongoing number theory series. Last time we looked at arithmetic functions. Uh we just we saw an intro of them using the number of divisors function. But as you would have expected, there are many different kinds of uh, arithmetic functions. Today we'll look at uh one you already have encountered, which is the Euler's totion function. uh which is the number of uh you know integers less than or equal to n uh positive integers that are coprime to l so that's uh, that's the main function of interest but in general we want to look at a class of arithmetic functions known as multiplicative functions uh that's those are the main topics today uh and let's get into it so as you can see uh the topic is euler's totion function and multiplicativity Now uh let's first redefine Euler's totion function. I redefine that. I'm just defining it again for your convenience. Phi of n where you know n is greater than or equal to 1 so natural number is the number of uh natural numbers and that are coprime to we saw in what context they came up this is the size of the reduced residue system. mod n uh, if you don't know what that means you can go back and watch an older video uh on multiplicativity and uh, so on on fermat's little theorem and euler's totion function in this series so phi n is this at a coprime to n okay today we'll look at uh certain things which in particular uh is formula of a formula for phi n and the multiplicativity of phi n so i'll define what a multiplicative fu- function is but yeah that's the main goal generally we'll want to look at multiplicative functions you know as a thing of its own which we will do in the next class so how do we find a formula for phi n uh as it turns out phi n as i said belongs to a class of functions known as multiplicative functions so what are they a function a multiplicative function say f from the natural numbers to the real numbers perhaps even the complex numbers is a function uh, is multiplicative if f of mn is equal to f of n times f of n where mn is for coprime mn So pause and take a second to understand what it's trying to say. Essentially, it's saying that uh, a function is multiplicative if it respects the multiplication of the natural numbers, making sure that the two numbers you're working with are coprime. In some ways, the idea is that you want to a, a multiplicative function only needs to be defined for prime powers. So if I know what it is on prime powers, uh, I can simply multiply the values at the prime powers to get all the natural numbers thanks to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic most of well not most but a lot of the uh, arithmetic functions of interest to us have this property a function is also called totally multiplicative if you don't need to have this coprime condition it works for all mn but that won't happen more often than not the idea is that in some ways uh, all functions of interest to us or well, a lot of the functions of interest to us sort of highlight some uh some part of the multiplicative structure of the natural numbers and because the multiplicative structure of the natural numbers is completely determined by the primes that's why so many of these functions have this property so yeah that's the idea we'll prove that shortly that phi of n has this property how do we go about doing that well a simple lemma that we can invoke that i will not prove because it's quite simple and uh, i want you to try it on your own because it tests the stuff we've already seen and it's also a very intuitive result the lemma says is that a number a natural number x is coprime to mn where mn and n are coprime natural numbers so you start with mn which are 
them in co prime in between each other so that's an intrinsic condition they're co prime to each other uh, and you ask what numbers are co prime to mn right this is co prime to mn uh, and the answer is x is co prime to mn the product if and only if it is co prime to both m and n m and n in a way the idea is that if m and n are co prime they don't share any prime factors so so they they're multiplicatively completely apart from each other and so if a number x was to was to not have any primes in common with mn that could only happen if it also didn't have any primes in common with m and n separately because when you bring together mn and you don't generate any new primes it's the same primes just put together so i want you to try to figure that out on on your own right and so in fact proving this is actually pretty easy thanks to not the lemma the result that cn is multiplicative thanks to the chinese remainder theorem that we saw a few classes ago as the, as you would would have guessed uh and if you remember the whole point of crt was that uh working modulo mn where mn and n are co prime is equivalent to working modulo m and n simultaneously and think about uh, what multiplicativity means what 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 we are trying to show what we're trying to show is that um p of mn is equal to phi of m times phi of n where mn and n are coprime i won't keep writing it so If you remember what I said in the class on Chinese remainder theorem, I said that pairs of numbers where A is a number mod n, uh, a residue mod m, and B is a, num- a residue mod n, pairs of these numbers correspond to correspond uniquely to residue C mod m n, and this is a one-one bijection. So pairs correspond to uh unique residue so for each residue there's a unique pair and for each pair there's a unique residue that's what crt is right so if i if i look at uh you know mod 3 and mod 4 right if i look if i consider the pair uh 2 3 right there's a unique number that corresponds to 2 and 2 mod 3 and 3 mod 4 that's what crt says some number t and also the other way if i choose any number uh c mod mn it obviously corresponds to a unique pair mod m and n which is just if i have c it maps to c mod m and c mod n just really to reduce it we saw this right that's kind of it a number is co cop- so think about what numbers are uh, co prime to m and n right remember the lemma right a number is co prime to m and n if and only if it is co prime to m and n in some ways this is also uh, an invocation of the spirit of crt regardless what i'm saying is if uh, you know uh, a represents the set of uh, residues uh, co prime to m which is actually the set of re- uh, numbers less than or equal to m co prime to m right because the residues are just numbers between uh, 0 and m minus 1 So we kind of get rid of that condition of being less than or equal to m by instead working with residues, and b is the same thing, but the residues co prime to m, right? Residues mod m co prime to m, residues mod n co prime to m, right? If I look at the what's called the Cartesian product, which is just pairs of numbers from a and b, right? A cross b is just a comma b, the pairs of numbers. You just put them together in a container. A from A and B from B. No big deal. This is just the it's just pairs of numbers, as you see, A comma B, where A is is co prime to M and B is co prime to N. By CRT, this corresponds uniquely to a residue mod M N, and since A was co prime to M and B was co prime to M. It's also a residue co prime to M N. Residue mod M N co prime to M N, right? And obviously the other it goes the other way as well. 
if you take a number some c uh, which is a residue mod mn co prime to mn if you just look at the pairs it corresponds to which is actually just c comma c which is just look at c mod m what residue is it look at c c mod n what residue is it that's a, that's an element of this set right so we have a one one bijection which means that a cross b the size of that set is the same as the size of the set of residues mod mn co prime to mn i think it would be good at this point for the viewer to try this with some a, a small example look at numbers mod 4 and mod 5 right look at all the numbers co prime to 4 all the numbers go prime to 5 and it will correspond in a one one manner to residues modulo 20 which are co prime to 20 that's it and we're done right but what is the size of a right the size of a is just c of m by definition so, so, as i said this is just a set of numbers less than equal to m co prime to m similarly this is c of n and what is the size of a cross b right you're just putting numbers pairs together by the multiplication principle of combinatorics it's phi of n times phi of n right the size of this set hence we're done right so the size of this is equal to phi of m times phi of n and the size of this is phi of n i hope the proof comes together nicely in your head we just looked at pairs of residues co prime to mn and by crt it's, this is equivalent to a, a residue co prime to mn that's it crt makes us Let's us do this kind of a traversal between pairs modulo m modulo n and residues modulo m. So hopefully that was clear. We proved something very nice. We proved that phi is multiplicative, right? Uh, believe it or not, this is enough to give us a formula because phi of uh, so what does this mean? So if n is equal to p one to the power alpha one, p k to the power alpha k, remember that. any two primes distinct primes are obviously relatively coprime and hence you take a prime power you know p1 to the alpha 1 is obviously uh, coprime to p2 to the alpha 2 or pk to the alpha k there is no common prime factor because there's only one prime that shows up in all of these numbers so if this is the case then phi of n is just going to be a product over these numbers right so this is similar to saying phi of 12 is just going to be phi of 2 square times phi of 3 right So phi of p one to the power alpha one all the way up to phi of p k to the power alpha k. So now I just need to figure out what phi is on uh for for prime powers. This is actually pretty easy. Think about what a prime power is. A prime power is just at the same prime multiplied with itself over and over again. So what are the numbers that are co-prime to? Uh, so what are the numbers co-prime to p to the alpha? That are less than equal to p to the power alpha. It's just the multiples of p, right? And wherever p shows up, or whatever numbers p will show up, you won't get, uh, you know, the GCD to be one. And wherever p does show up, uh, wherever p doesn't show up, the GCD won't be. The GCD will be equal to one. Simple thing. If p shows up, GCD is more than or equal to p. If p doesn't show up, it's equal to one, right? So we're really just looking for uh, the, the the number of multiples of p less than equal to p to the alpha, which is just p to the alpha by p, right? P to the alpha minus one. This is all the num. This is all the multiples uh, of p less than equal to p to the power alpha. So I'll just subtract it from the total number of numbers between one and p to the alpha. That's it. Very simple argument. Uh, which is just p to the power alpha minus one times p minus one, right? And so if I put it all together, phi of n, right? So we saw we solved the intermediate problem, and phi of n is just p to the power alpha minus one, so p one to the power alpha one minus one, p two to the power alpha two minus one, all the way up to p k to the power alpha k minus one times p one minus one, p two minus one. P k minus one. We can write this in a very nice form, which is just take these minus ones out. So we have p one to the power alpha one, p k to the power alpha k, and we'll pair up the one by p one, one by p two with the p one minus one. So p one minus one by p one, p one to the power minus one is one by p one, p two minus one by p two, p k minus one by p k. Right. 
But what is this? This is just n, right? By definition, it's just n times one minus one by p one, one minus one by p two, one minus one by p k. And this is a standard formula for uh, Euler's torsion function. One last thing that I want to talk about is this result, which is known as uh, well, it's not called Gauss's lemma because Gauss's lemma could mean <laughs> one of the billion results that Gauss had proved. It's just a result attributed to Gauss. It's a very beautiful result, and it says that the sum of phi of d, right, as d runs over the divisors of n, is actually equal to n. It's a very striking result. I will not prove it right now. I will only put the result in your head so that you can think about it. Next class, we'll look at things like these, sums like these, and they're a very important sum. And we look at stuff like Mobius inversion uh, and so on and many such exciting things. The theory of multiplicative functions is actually very rich. There's lots of great phenomena that happen and we look at them next time. For now, I just want you to, th to look at it, appreciate it and think about it. Um, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next class. Bye-bye.